Hello friends, today I will be talking to you about a very very important topic that is hypertension. Hypertension is also known as silent killer disease. Now, before I talk about this topic, let us learn what is the definition of hypertension. For that, we see systole, diastolic BP. When we talk about normal BP, normal BP. Systolic BP is below 120 millimeter of mercury, all are in millimeter mercury and it is end point to be noted. Diastolic BP is below 80 millimeter of mercury. Then we have prehypertension. Systolic BP is between 120 to 139 and or point to be noted here it is and or diastolic BP is 80 to 89 millimeter of mercury. Then we have stage 1, it is stage 1, 140 to 159 and or 90 to 99, stage 2, it is more than 160 and or more than 100 millimeter of mercury. This is and or. This is the what actual definition is, but in broader term when they talk about hypertension they say that B systolic BP more than 140 and diastolic more than 90 is hypertension okay in broader terms when they talk about well now first we learn what is the meaning of this suppose i get one patient whose bp is 140 suppose i get one patient whose bp is 126 by 104. Now, 126 come in the category of prehypertension, 104 come in the category of stage 2. So, uh, we will be calling this patient as stage 2 patient. That means, obviously, every time we will be getting two values. So, whatever whichever value is on the higher side, we will be taking that value. For example, I have one patient whose BP is 162 by 78. This is stage 2, this is normal. So, in total we will take as stage 2. That is why we, you are, you, we are using term and or and to have a normal BP below 120 and below 80 and hypertension as I discussed was they usually talk when BP is above 140 and above 90 is the hypertension. Now, there is a term called white coat hypertension, white coat hypertension. In this patient has normal BP at home 
but when the patient goes to the hospital or to doctor in the clinic, his BP goes high. So, that is so called white coat hypertension. So, you can summarize that white coat hypertension is high BP in hospital or clinic, normal BP and for normal BP at home. That when the patient check gets his BP checked at home, this is normal. Now, how to confirm? Now, for that the most accurate test is 24 hours ambulatory BP checking, 24 hour ambulatory BP checking is the most accurate test to confirm this entity. Now, we have one more thing so called pseudo hypertension, pseudo hypertension pseudo hypertension also known as isolated systolic hypertension isolated systolic hypertension it is the one entity seen in the elderly person only systolic BP is high, systolic BP is above 140 millimeter of mercury, but diastolic is normal, diastolic BP is normal, right. So, that, so it means diastolic BP will be below 80. This is due to arteriosclerosis. this arterio and I hope you all know the, in the pathology in arteriosclerosis tunica media is involved and it may be calcified the artery become rigid and that reduces distensibility of the artery. Okay. This is regarding pseudo hypertension. Now, Hypertension can be both systolic or diastolic BP, both may be high, but at times only systolic BP is high. Now, what are the causes of systolic hypertension like what we saw? The causes of systolic hypertension, systolic hypertension that means only systolic BP will be high, diastolic will be normal. First, we already have seen in ISH isolated systolic hypertension. It is also seen in aortic regurgitation, also seen in severe anemia, also seen in hyperthyroid. hyperthyroid can also occur in pregnancy. So, they are the few causes of only systolic hypertension. Now, we have one more entity that we should know before we really come to the hypertension. Ankle brachial index that is in short we write as ABI. Now, what is this? In this we check BP in the ankle and we check systolic BP in the brachial artery. And if this value is less than 0 
that indicate peripheral vascular disease. And if this value is below 0.3, it indicates severe peripheral vascular disease. So, it is a simple OPD test, highly useful in those conditions where lower limb vessel are involved like coarctation of aorta, diabetes or smokers. So, ankle brachial index is very, very important. Usually those patients where we have lower limb blood vessel involved causing decreased blood supply, causing peripheral vascular disease, they usually have intermittent claudication and single best drug in today's era for intermittent uh, claudication is silostazole. Zol is the single best drug for intermittent claudication. Right. So, now we talk about what are the causes of hypertension. It's, as you know it very well, 90 95 percent are idiopathic or what we call as primary hypertension. about which we do not know the cause, but only in around 5 to 7 percent we really know the cause and that we call as what? Secondary hypertension, we call as secondary hypertension. Now, let us talk about what are the causes of secondary hypertension. First of all, renal causes. In the renal causes, we, it include condition like chronic renal failure, autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease, renal artery stenosis and renin secreting tumors. tumors. Then we talk about certain endocrine condition, endocrine condition. These include pheochromocytoma, Cushing syndrome. This also include acromegaly. It include cone syndrome, it include hyper and hypothyroid, it include hyper parathyroid. These are some of the important endocrine condition where hypertension is usually associated. But before I proceed further, I like to highlight one more thing. These are endocrine condition where we have hypertension, but some of them can also have hyperglycemia also like pheochromocytoma, like Cushing syndrome, light Acromegaly, these are the three conditions where patient also has hyperglycemia also. This is the extra information for you. Now, one thing I like to highlight, Addison disease, in Addison disease, hypertension is never a feat. This is a very important point in endocrine that you got to remember. Okay. 
Now, certain drugs which can lead to hypertension, corticosteroids, long term use of non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs, chronic alcoholism. oral contraceptive, Mao B inhibitors, amphetamine, and catecholamine like phenylephrine, phenylephrine or any other catecholamine, they all can induce hypertension. Now, we have certain miscellaneous condition which include rather I should say connective tissue disorder. Classically here we talk about polyarthritis nodosa, scleroderma, Takayashu disease. They are certain connective tissue disorders which lead to hypertension. Then we talk about certain miscellaneous condition which can lead to hypertension. The some of the miscellaneous condition we can talk about is miscellaneous condition. This include coarctation of aorta. Plastically, there will be brachiofemoral delay, porphyria, Gulen Barre syndrome, GBS, pregnancy, then Gordon syndrome. Liddell syndrome. These are some of the miscellaneous condition which can lead to hypertension, but do not forget 95 percent cases are idiopathic. In fact, any patient who come to you before 25 or after 55 year of age for the first time with hypertension, you should always suspect about secondary hypertension. So, you can say other way around somewhere around 25 to 55 is the age of idiopathy, idiopathy below 25 and and after 55 that is coming for the first time with hypertension it could be a case of secondary hypertension so when we talk about secondary hypertension now what investigation we do first i'll talk about what are the general investigation we do in all the hypertension investigation to be done in all the cases of hypertension as far as these are concerned these are endocrine condition they need all specific in investigation for Cushing for Fio all this thing. So, let us see what all investigations you have to write when the patient comes to you for the first time especially idiopathic variety. You call for complete blood counts urine routine and microscopy. Remember urine routine microscopy is also sometime called as liquid biopsy of the kidney. You can get lot of information like pyuria, hematuria, proteinuria which strongly point towards some renal cause of the disease. 
then you assess for diabetes, you can go for fasting, blood sugar checking, why? Although diabetes as such is not a cause of hypertension, but hypertension and diabetes are always together. Rather I should say, if patient come to you with hypertension, you should always investigate for diabetes because they are usually together. Same thing for diabetes, you would like to go for HbA1c, lipid profile because, because especially in elderly person, ka lipid profile is again a risk factor for coronary artery disease. So, you like to go for that. You should always go for blood urea, serum creatinine, serum electrolyte that is sodium and potassium, calcium, this should be done. Go for USG ultrasound of the, of the kidney, especially to look for the kidney size, chest x-ray, ECG. These are the baseline investigation you should do in all the cases. Now, depending on the requirement, you can add on eco also, then you, ca, you have to look for the any other thing uh, which indicate toward the secondary like Cushing, acromegaly I told you all these how to investigate we will be talking when we talk about individual disease, you can see that video. As of now, I am just talking about that we have to investigate secondary if you are suspecting, right. So, this how we have to go for the investigation of a case of secondary hypertension. Thank you very much.